Alright, hey guys, it's Tyler and welcome back to After The Run. Uh, this is week three and we're going to be talking about beating procrastination and setting goals for 2022, okay? First, let's talk about just my numbers for the week. Um, this was an interesting week, so I'm coming off um, having COVID and not running and just barely starting to get back into exercise. And we'll talk about um, how to come back from an illness and an injury next week. Uh, but this week, I really wanted to talk about goal setting for the year and, and what I'm doing and, and what I've already tried doing to, to beat procrastination, so that's why I'm kind of flipping the order. Now, I mentioned in this episode, I'm going to be talking to you about um, breaking the habit of procrastination, and this is something that I was really struggled with last year. Um, in fact, the reason I wanted to do this episode is I started looking through my data for last year and my total mileage and what I averaged from month to month. And I was just so discouraged and frustrated when I looked at it because I know in 2018 I ran like 1300 miles, in 2019 I ran over a thousand miles, and then I got to 2020 and last year I ran, I ran 500 and 39 miles. So less than half what I'd been doing up to that point. Uh, that was really, really discouraging for me, and I, I started thinking through, well, what happened? And, and the truth is I procrastinated. Procrastinating is when you delay a worthwhile task for whatever reason. And, and in my case, it was mostly stress. Um, it was getting out of shape and being heavy, and so that influenced things. But I just wasn't running as much and doing as much uh, because I was just putting it off and I didn't want to start that way this year. And so I started doing some research on goal setting and thinking about what are different things that I could do uh, to break that habit of procrastination. Now one of the cool things that I learned, and I, I guess I just never really thought about this, but it's not that we're procrastinators, um, but we engage in the habit of procrastination. The reality is there's no such thing as a procrastinator. There's no people who are procrastinators. There's simply people who engage in the habit of procrastination, which means that it, it's something that you can change. It's a cycle that you can break. There's science behind it. And if, you, if you're willing to do the work, you can beat procrastination. Um, but one of the things that I found right away, if you want to overcome procrastination, is set a goal or a challenge. And, and to set something, that means you need to write it down. Um, and even better, you should tell someone about it. And so you can do the SMART goals, um, specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, time-bound, and, and that's really the best way to set goals is, is to keep it um, within those confines. But I've also found if you really want to accomplish your goals, tell someone else about it, and especially tell someone whose opinion you value or respect. And I, I did something that I didn't read anywhere in any advice as far as beating procrastination. Everyone says set the bar really low so that you can achieve those regular goals. But I thought, what happens if I set a goal that's really high and just rip the band-aid off and do it right away? And so this last week, I decided to do that. And I, um, Actually, it wasn't this week, it was on the first day of the year. So on January 1st, 2022, I ran my first marathon uh, of the year, and it was very difficult. I was 270 pounds, grossly out of shape, and I knew I couldn't do it uh, easily, and I knew I'd have to do it in an unconventional way. I knew I wouldn't be able to run the full 26.2 miles without having some issues, and so I mapped it out in a, in a way that I think is really smart. And I wanted to talk about that here because the way I accomplished that one goal is similar to how I'm going to accomplish some of my bigger goals this year, like losing 50 pounds. So I knew at the beginning, for the first five miles or so, the first 20%, that I would be able to do it on my own, no problem. I was prepared for that. And so I was able to run, and I did, and I, I ran pretty slow. I was running about a 12 and a half, 13 minute mile. 
Uh, but I ran those first five miles without stopping, without having any major issues, despite difficult conditions. It was close to zero de degrees Fahrenheit, uh, so well below freezing. I had a bundle up, uh, I was wearing several layers, and even with that, uh, it was difficult. I, I froze through and I wish that I had worn even warmer clothing. Um, I went early in the morning and it was just really challenging, but I knew that just my training up to that point would get me through the first five miles. So I got through, through the first 10 miles without any major issue. Now I know when I'm losing weight, the same thing is usually true. The first uh, few days or weeks of losing weight, you're getting rid of a lot of the bloating and the water weight and the weight comes off really quickly. And for me, that was certainly true. In my first week of weight loss this year, I lost over 10 pounds. And so just like running, where it was easy for that first five to 10 miles, um, with weight loss, often it's easy because we're breaking bad habits, we're starting something new, we're shocking our system. But then I knew that that next 10 miles would be really difficult. And so what I did was I enlisted the help of others. And sometimes we need to do that with our goals. And so I got each of my children to come out and run with me or walk with me. And we went, um, I walked a few miles on my own first and just kind of recovered. And then I got my children and they came out and we talked about our New Year's resolutions together as we walked. And I interviewed them and asked them questions. And it was really great. And it was a way to distract me. I slowed down. So that got me past the half marathon, past the halfway point, and that was really great. Then once I was getting around to, to the 20 mile mark, um, I had kind of rested because I was doing a lot of walking with my kids, and so I was able to start jogging again and do that last 10K. I was able to run the whole time, albeit at a much slower pace, but I was able to finish. Now, normally for me, a marathon's gonna happen in four to five hours, and this one took me over seven hours. So it was super, super slow. But sometimes that's how our goals go. And, you know, my weight loss goal for this year, I know that the first month I'm gonna lose the most weight. And in fact, here I am in week three and I've already lost 15 pounds. So I'm one third of the way to my goal. And next month I'll probably lose about half that, so I'll probably lose another eight or nine pounds in month two. But after that, I know I'm gonna hit some plateau and I know it's gonna be hard. And just like I did in my run, that's where I have to ask for some help. That's where I'm gonna to have to change things up. I might have to slow things down. I might have to walk a little bit. And with my weight loss journey, I know that I'm gonna need similar help. I'm gonna to have to change things up. Then, once the finish line is in sight, you know, in my marathon, it was that last 10K and I was able to speed up and I did my last mile in about 12 minutes, which was great, um, maybe even a little faster than that. But when you're losing weight and you're getting really close to that goal, that's where really double down on things, you set new goals, you have daily challenges and you're really looking forward to getting those after pictures and things like that. And so I know that's gonna happen for me this year too. So once I get close to that 50 pounds loss, I, I think I'm gonna be able to pick up the pace and knock off those last few pounds. So that was my experience for day one, January 1st, was run a marathon. I can check that off the list for the year. It wasn't a race and so I still plan on doing another marathon, um, but it certainly was something that helped me get my mileage up uh, and that was really great, especially considering about a week and a half after that, I contracted COVID and had to totally stop working out for a while. And we'll talk about that in next week's episode. So until then, uh, keep working hard and having fun, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.